Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber. Uh, today we're trying out a new camera, and so to do it, we are actually going to show you a little bit of very crude footage of us assembling a motor starter panel. This is one of our standard panels. We drill the enclosures in batches of 10 or 20 so we can pull them out and quickly turn them around when you order. Unlike with our custom control panels where we wait until the end to measure and cut our shafts, we have the exact measurements and position of these down, so we do that first. When you're tightening the end onto the shaft, put it down on a table instead of holding it in your hand. I've got a nice Phillips screwdriver shaped scar on the inside of my hand from jabbing myself from tightening these once. These snap right on the top of the manual motor starter for use as a through the door disconnect. We install our handles, make sure that your O-rings are positioned properly. Snap the manual motor starter over the den rail and make sure it lines up from left to right with the disconnect shaft. Put the ground block to the right of the manual motor starter. Snap the contactor beside of it, then snap the end anchor on. Now we start connecting wires, which we also pre-cut to speed up the turnaround of these motor starter panels. Check out our YouTube video where we show our automatic wire stripper in action. I'll also include a link to the wiring diagram for our starter panels in the description. We only put a minimum amount of wire ties to hold the wires together so they are easily traced when troubleshooting. Also turn the wire ties towards the door of the enclosure after you trim them so they are not sticking out for someone to cut themselves. We torque all the screws in our panel once they have been landed. Every panel that leaves your shop, you should test all the functionality of. So we don't need three phase to test this one. We're actually gonna just use single phase. And this is actually my test setup. So I can test, I have a single transformer, which I've done some really creative wiring inside to put this selector switch on, so that I can test 240 single phase and 480 single phase with a selector switch. And then I have 24 volt, 5 volt, and 15 volt. So I have the circuit breaker turned off. And these are the two wires that make our 480 volt. Now we're switching our circuit breaker on. And this is a basic start stop control. Dart. So part of um, our Patreon uh, videos is uh, they're very uncut. And I hit the start button and nothing happens. So we'll be right back. Okay, we're back again and we haven't actually done anything because as many times as I've been uh, stumped by this, yeah, I forgot to turn the disconnect on. So now we're going to turn the disconnect on and try again. And this time, start. Okay, um, it still isn't working. So I um, <laughs> forgot to turn the power back on. So, third time is a charm. Start. Ah, stop. Alright, we'll turn our power back off. Um, also, one thing to note is when, um, when you're removing terminals, especially where, from where the electrician are going to land um, their wires, uh, make sure you unscrew the terminals all the way. Because when the terminal is tight, there's actually a gap above, above and below the lug where you can um, accidentally slide it in. Uh, so with these super small wires, if I just broke it loose enough for to get these wires out, chances are the electrician, when he went to put his wire in, he would um, he wouldn't get it in the lug. And it's a small thing, but it can save some time on startup. So we we'll switch our disconnect on. Turn that on. Start. Stop. Power back off. Again, open these all the way up. All right, so our panels are built and tested, and there are a couple things that um, that you'll want to put on them. One, uh, be proud. Put your sticker on it. So we're going to put stickers on the front of these. Like the amber is better at this. I'm going to let amber put the sticker on. And then there's probably an electrical warning sticker that you need to put on. Check your local jurisdictions for any of that. Alright, one thing I see missing on a lot of, I'll say smaller panels and smaller manufacturer panels, is a nameplate. Now we use a regular sticker for our nameplate, even though we still call it a nameplate, it's more of just a label. But uh, this has some important information on it for an electrician, so don't leave these off. Um, whether you're doing a UL panel or non-UL panel, uh, mainly we, all our panels have serial numbers so we can track them later on. Uh, we have the voltage that needs to come into the panel, because a lot of times we do find out there's a little misunderstandings. Uh, the, the current, because while the electrician could look in here and figure out what the current is, he shouldn't have to. Uh, so this gives him all the information he needs to make sure he wires it up. It also gives the environmental rating, uh, the short circuit current rating for our arc flash, and a little more warning. So this sticker for our panels, we put on the side of it here. 
And the main thing I would say here is be consistent. Oop. Like I said, you get much rougher videos when you're a Patreon subscriber. And then, since this is, and then since this is a UL panel, it also gets a UL sticker that goes on the inside of the door. Action. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so a couple things that you need. Every panel needs a wiring diagram. So wiring diagram goes in. Also, we actually put the mounting feet inside of it because the way they stick out on these, they can get broke off in shipping. And make sure that you latch your panel when you ship it. Now, one thing when you're... um. One thing about panels, we don't keep a lot of material around here, but these are actually really good. These come with the panels that we buy, and these are great for protecting them and shipping. So we're going to play, reuse them. And then we'll put some bubble wrap, or we'll put some airbags in to protect this disconnect handle. And yes, thank you for your support. Okay, so that footage was very crude, and we see that we need, um, we've got a serious, like, reddish tint issue going on. Hope you found this video helpful. Till next time. See ya. Today we're testing camera equipment. Trying to figure out how to make it work with a tall person and a short person. <laughs> Near far. I just Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.